Hello everybody, this is Brent from Studio One Expert and in this second video I'm going to be showing you how you can use different instances of player tracks in your show page. In the first video I showed how we could import this song here hanging on and we imported it from a song view so if you want to go back and watch the first video that'll probably make a lot more sense and then come and watch the second video. So in this second video I want to show how we can use software instruments as well as these auxiliary player tracks within the show page. So if we go over here and have a look, you can see that I've got an addictive keys loaded in. I've got a guitar track, a lead vocal track, and an external synthesizer using the brand new external instruments feature in Studio One version five. So the first track, the roads. Now, disclaimer, I am actually monitoring this out of a, a virtual output into my recording software. So there might be some latency when I'm demoing these features, but that is not present in any of Studio One's updates currently. So with that said, I'm going to show you uh, Addictive Keys here, which is just a third party um, software instrument that I'm using over my track. So if I give you a play of my track here. So it's already quite a fleshed out production, but what would be really nice is if I could have that backing track go in, which we loaded in the first episode, and then I have maybe some bandmates playing live. So this could be going to, say, a keyboard controller for your synth player. This could be a guitarist. Then you could have a similar thing for a bassist on another channel. I've got my lead vocals, and then I've got an external synthesis for, say, a dual setup for the keyboard player. So here's my backing track, and here is my first software instrument. Now to load this in, I just went to players, and I went to virtual instrument, and then as you always do, I just went into browse and I dropped in one of my instruments from my favorites panel here. These are instruments that I use regularly. So if I come out of here and I load in this Rhodes sound, you will be able to hear the beautiful Rhodes. Ah, doesn't that sound lovely? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that over this song and you'll hear how this can be a really big addition to bringing players into your live shows. Now another huge feature that I love about the show page is I can load in some of my favorite um, third party VSTs or AUs and I can even use some of the Presonus ones but what I really love is this Valhalla Shimmer. Long story short this thing basically is a pitch shifting reverb. I'm going to stick this on, we can already hear it's doing magical wonders and this is another great part about the show feature is you can actually change some of the um, VSTs in real time and you can add these effects in post and use them live. So let's have a listen to how that sounds. So you get the idea, we can modify our favorite software instruments with effects just like you would in the song page. So if we move on to our second track here, I've got a guitar track and I have a guitar sitting right next to me. And I'm gonna pick that guitar up and this guitar track is gonna have Empire on from Presonus, which was released in version 4.6, I believe, last year. And I've got a choice of different presets here, just like the song page. Everything's come to the show page from the song page. Remember, it's just like a slightly stripped down version. And I've picked my head and my cab, and now I've got my effects on the bottom. And essentially, I've got a little um, external effects set up here, and I'm using the new analog delay, which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm grabbing this for a lot of um, delay now when it comes to if I want a delay plugin, this is probably the one I use nine times out of 10. That's an honest truth. And I've got that before the umpire or I could have it post. It's completely up to you. So if I enable both of these and I go over and grab my guitar and I'm just gonna bring the fader up on guitar track. Now let's have a listen to some guitar over this track.
So again, another world of possibilities there. And also you can control the level of your guitarist for a change. That's going to be a game changer for many people. Um, maybe a bit unfortunate for guitarists, but we can actually be in control of our players' levels within the show page, which is a really great feature. Now, another fantastic thing here is we can actually have our own dedicated vocal channel. So I do have some backing vocals in my backing track, but on this track, I've got a lead vocal set up as well. Now, again, I would recommend that you can, you know, put some effects in here. Why not, you know, just make the best sound you can possibly give at a concert? So I've got an effects chain here. And the main thing here is I've got this Wave CLE vocals, and I've done a couple of videos on this before for Waves. And it's a really fantastic plugin because, again, you've got a lot of purpose in one unit here. So I think something like this could be very beneficial for live performance because, again, you don't want to be throttling your CPU. You don't want to be worrying about stuff like that. You just want to be performing. So something like this could probably do the whole thing. I've put a couple of extras in here that I've just used regularly and I really like. And simple routing as well. I haven't even set up any sender returns here. I've just kept Valhalla Vintage as almost everyone uses now with the mix knob dialed back. And here we will get an idea as to how our vocals sound. So I'll bring this up and we'll try some vocals over this. <laughs> So, as you can hear, we're really starting to get a totally different experience to what most bands would deliver in a live scenario. And I guess some bands are probably already doing shows like this, but these are huge budget shows. So if you can do something like this from Presonus and you can create your own song at home and take it the show, it's a really, really exciting thing, I think. And for Presonus users, this is going to be a very, very familiar workflow because it's just a stripped down version of the song page. So finally, we're going to look at an external synthesizer and I have a ARP Odyssey behind me here and I'm just going to go over to the ARP and again, we're using a couple of the fantastic new plugins that come with Studio One and I've got the analog delay and I've got a preset on there which I love and I just dial the feedback a bit which is 1976 old analog. I've got open air, it's another great um, reverb plugin and you've got some really fantastic uh, presets that come with this and finally i've got chorus and again you can put this in whatever order you want it doesn't matter what order it is as long as it sounds good and this is a fantastic uh, chorus recreation i love the way it sort of looks slightly like the re201 and roland stuff even though it's a chorus it just it looks great um so let's have a listen to how that sounds without the effects and this is a little bit like the update they did in Omnisphere where they allowed you to integrate hardware synthesizers and get more from your hardware synths with the software. So if we have a listen, here is what the synth sounds without the inserts. Okay, so it sounds quite good. It's got a little bit of um, hardware effects on it within the unit. And then I'm going to enable all of these. I'm going to hear quite a dramatic change. So you can imagine combining that with your electric guitarist and a bassist and your lead vocals. You've got pretty much a complete way to control and mix your set. And you have this all done before you go there. You don't have to worry about it. It's all prepared. We're still not going hard on the performance meter here at the bottom at all. So let's finish this second video with um, a performance from the ARP. And I'll see you in the next one.